Good afternoon. This is a demonstration of what we've done to this Ford Transit Custom Euro 6.2. The customer's had um, a security package and a, a battery sort of package, which I'll, I'll demonstrate now. So we're based in the West Midlands, 07900 605040. We are Locks of Islands approved premium dealers, Starline dealers, Clifford, Meta, Cobra. Um, we're also electricians, auto electricians, so we do anything to do with their lighting, split charge, cameras, whatever. So I'll show you the lock package first. It's had the, um, the locks for vans, rep lock in the driver's door. It's a very nice um, stainless rep lock, that's called. These are suited on T-series keys. So we've done a slam lock as well. So a slam lock, what that basically does is it disables the existing door handle. So every time you shut the door, it's locked. Just requires a little turn, nice and simple, to open the door. We've also coupled that with a uh, suited deadlock in the high position. So when you engage that lock, you just feel a bit of rubbing. That means that the actual hook is um, engaging nice and tight. So when you open the door, or we'll try to, there's zero movement. Less than a millimetre we aim for. Uh, that's our sort of promise to you is that if you are getting deadlocks fitted or you've had them fitted just make sure that there's no movement and to get no movement it's, it's a combination of aligning the the lock case and also aligning the uh, the receiving bracket you need to make sure that it's uh, adjusted and tweaked down to you know one mil or less so this one we've got down to less than one mil and these are locks of vans, hook bolts. They're a non-returning latching hook. So I'll show you that again. Shut the door. So we can't try it because it's, uh, it's slam locked as well. So the idea being day to day, you know, with the operators around the van or within eyesight, you'll just use a slam lock as the, the default security method. But when the van's out of sight, just turn that deadlock. 360 and when you pop it then you'll get no movement okay that's the rear door deadlock the side door deadlock is the same again these are sweated sweated locks so one key will do every lock on the van the rep lock and the uh deadlocks and the driver's door. I'm using two keys because it's easy to demonstrate with two. So you get one twist and the door will pop open. Nice and simple one-handed operation um, and again the customer wants the added security of the deadlock to stop door peeling. Hang on, I haven't shut that door properly. There you go. So Again, it's a nice smooth operation. You'll just see that when we lock the van, it just pulls the door in, maybe half a mil. That's down to the way we fit the keep and align the keep. Um, you'll see on this uh, installation, there's no kinking in the door. On a brand new van, you wanna make sure that um, the lock sits nicely in the side door. The lock cylinder does sit slightly on the piss. That's just due to the uh, the angle of the inner door skin. So I'll just show you that attempted to be opened. So when we pop the door, there's no movement there. So the door hasn't moved at all. What we see a lot of with the uh, lock installers is that when the, the door is attempted, this, this gap can open up, you know, five to 10 mil. Yeah, the door is locked, the deadlock is engaged, but you uh, you don't really want any play for them to attack the lock. So as you can see, that's, uh, that's all wax oiled and rust proofed. All the locks we fit, we, we coat all the cuts in wax oil, which is an anti-corrosion uh, inhibitor. Stops any rust before, uh, forming and any existing rust, it'll cure it. Uh, make sure your door keeps all, you know, all your shuts and slams are all swept down because drillings will go to rust in about five, six hours. They instantly go off. 
Customers also had an anti-peel bracket. This is a locks for vans device, which bolts into the existing points here. And it's also riveted in inside here. And that receives into a bracket on the uh, near side B pillar. So when the door shuts, that tongue goes into that slot and then gives a lot more peel protection to the top left corner of the door. So I'll just check the doors are uh, that's the hook. Always make sure your lock is in before you shut the door. So that's the side door, slam locked and deadlocked. Now this customer did want um, his lighting reconfigured basically. So normally you'll have, you know, interior LEDs in here. We've moved that one across to that side. We've left that one existing. What we've done, we've changed all the uh, the lighting to um, to a leisure battery feed, so and added, added extra switches. So the customer wanted this side door light to be independent from the rears. So this is a permanently fed, non-vehicle battery fed light. It's wired off the leisure battery, so it will never drain the uh, the vehicle van. So that's that one. And we've also done the same on the uh, on the rear. So again, he said. I want my lights to be fed separately. So the existing Ford lights, uh, somebody asked, asked this question on the customer owners group earlier today. Can you rewire them permanent? Yes, you can. Um, I wouldn't recommend it unless you're doing it off a uh, leisure battery. In case you leave them on, then you'll wake up to a flat battery. Basically, the, the wiring for the lights runs along the uh, offside roof down the ABC pillar. It runs along here behind this panel, so we've had all this off. You've got terminations down here for the, the lighting circuit. You have the blue black for the earth, and I can't remember the, the, the live. There's a switch live that controls the light, so you'd have, to, you'd have to run a permanent live. So I ran a permanent live, fused from the battery down to here, and then I've spurred it all back um, across the van, across to the near side, and across sort of run. What I used here was I used the existing vehicle forward wiring and tapped into it down here so yeah you have to run a bit of wiring back and forth but um yeah if you are going to do it you'd, i'd recommend a leisure battery supply for the lighting because it will eventually if you forget drain your van battery uh, we also fitted some sockets in the rear the customer wanted switchable sockets in the rear so these are 12 volt sockets and these are all fused at uh, 20 amps so he's had two sockets on the offside Two sockets on the near side, these are just 12 volt fused sockets for the tools and stuff they're going to be using to uh, charge on these shelves. And we also fitted another 12 volt socket in this enclosure. Again, the customer said he, he told me exactly where he wanted all the sockets fitting, how they wanted to be wired, how they, how they should be fed. So we've had a consultation and the wiring for this will run up into the uh, into the vehicle um, roof structures so it's all safe and all fused um, what else leisure battery yeah leisure battery we put under the seat in the driver's seat there is room in front of the uh, main battery to fit a leisure battery so the seat has to come out um, and then we fitted a SeatTech D250 which is a lovely split charge system so basically you have the alternator feed in, which I've taken off the main van battery. So that's fused at the van battery source. Then we have an output from the CTEC when the engine's running. And that gives you, you know, charging voltage 14, 14, 8, 14, 4 into the spare battery. It's locally earthed to a good chassis point main thing about split charge and anything electrical is the the earth it needs to be spot on so we've earthed it onto the the vehicle battery which is also earthed to the chassis directly so yeah the ctec is um we call it a b2b charging system battery to battery in a euro 6 vehicle which this is this is euro 6.2 it tells you on here stage 6.2 Anything Euro 6 or above, anything with that blue, will have a 
uh, like a regenerative charging system. Let's explain that in layman's terms. Due to EU regulations, they want the van alternator be to, to be, you know, not constantly loading 14 volts into the vehicle because it isn't needed. After you start the van on a, on a day where you're not using many lights or wipers or heat, the van battery will quite happily sit at 12 volts. Um, and then it will charge up, give little spikes to 15 volts when the van when the van is slowing down. This is great for the vehicle battery, but this won't maintain a leisure battery. So what you need to do is basically this CTEC will take 12 volts in. If the van is in a 12 volt stage of its cycle, what this does, it will knock up the voltage to, to 15, 14, 4, and give a nice charging voltage to the leisure battery. So a lot of people ask, do I need a B2B charger? Um, in my opinion, everything with AdBlue on any vehicle, not just Fords, anything Euro 6 onwards, I fit B2B systems in. Anything that's not AdBlue, Euro 5, you can fit a normal voltage sensing relay. Voltage sensing relay, but in this instance, Euro 6.2, You've definitely got a smart alternator in there and that basically what that does is when you start the vehicle it will give you a nice healthy nice healthy charge to your ledger battery now in this configuration we need to give the CTEC a ignition feed which when you've got the seat off down in this corner here this hasn't got the uh, two volt, 240 volt input. There's a nice simple plug, a three-way plug in there with a, a good earth, a good live, and a good ignition feed. So we just tag onto that. Tell that to turn on when it sees the ignition come on. So you'll see when I start the engine, you'll see this kick in, and then you'll see the graphic go. There you go. So it's gone from A, alternated to battery. Now that's now charging the leisure battery. So that kicks in as soon as you start the van, tops up the leisure battery, and then turns it off when you turn the ignition off. It can take a few seconds, but um, yeah, it releases the leisure battery, separates the link. So there you go, that's just switched off the circuit. So the leisure battery now is on its own. And the customer also asked for the, the roof beacon to be fitted, but not a permanent roof beacon. You find a socket for a roof beacon, and there's a rear socket. So when the driver gets in the van, he can knock off the rear sockets or leave them on. And the roof beacon, what we've done is we've fitted another 12 volt socket to the rear up here. So that's mounted just next to the into so the rear load light. This socket is switched on via the front. So when the customer has, they only wanted a magnetic roof beacon. So what they're going to do when they just drop it on the roof, they'll put the curly cord through and plug it into there. They can then control it at the front off the permanent feed, off the leisure battery. So none of the wiring I've done is off the vehicle battery. We've left that well alone because these guys are site workers, they're surveyors, and they don't want the, the, the risk of uh, flattening the van battery. They could have a lot of stuff on charge in the back. The lights on all night, all evening and there's no damage no chance of the vehicle back to draining so yeah that's a nice um i didn't do the racking that was done i did first fix electrics and i'll come back today just to finish off the sockets and the the fusing and the split charge so yeah um nice safe sustainable very practical van deadlocks slam locks a rep lock split charge system extra lighting system Switches at the front, everything we do is lifetime warranty. CTEC D250, in my opinion, is the best B2B charger out there. It's also got input for solar. So you've got there, if you are having a solar panel fitted, you can just drop the live from the solar panel onto that, and then drop your earth from the solar panel onto this. And then this will uh, charge your vehicle battery and leisure battery whilst you are in the sun it's the same system i've got on mine so we've got a a color coded uh who makes this i forgot victron 115 watt solar panel and on my van that's linked into a display excuse the mess which tells me the uh the current of the the solar input we've also put an inverter on my van and um yeah it's quite overcast 
but you can see the van, the van voltage leisure battery is increasing now I've turned off the inverter so it's always been topped up by the sun 12.74 that'll go to 12.75 in a minute uh, there you go and that'll just creep up nicely up to 14 volts and once the leisure battery is full it'll flip over to my van battery and maintain that as well so yeah thanks for watching cheers